Bandersnatch. More like Shrek 5, because this movie has so many layers. Are you an everyday nerd? Hit that subscribe button and turn on notifications so that you don't miss the next episode. Yo, welcome to Everyday Nerd, the show. We haven't watched any Black Mirror until now. I'm your host, Zach Center, today's Trinity Tuesday. Happy Tuesday. If you're new around here on Tuesdays, we talk about the things that everybody else has talked about. It's a, it's a new little concept. I have always been a fan of science fiction that makes you think about life and what if. I've always loved The Twilight Zone and Outer Limits. I'm looking forward to the new version of Twilight Zone, which is being run by Jordan Pill. Super interested in that. But the one thing that I've been late to the party on is Black Mirror. Described as basically being modern day Twilight Zone with adult themes, Black Mirror is a sci-fi anthology series that's focused on the near future and where things aren't quite as they seem. Like I said, I haven't seen a single episode of Black Mirror until I heard everybody talk about the most recent episode or special, Bandersnatch. Bandersnatch was the final straw. For those of you who haven't seen it yet, Bandersnatch is about a two hour experience featuring a teenager named Stefan who wants to create a game based off of a choose your own adventure book. He goes to a video game company called Tuckersoft who agrees to basically fund his game. The rest of the experience mostly involves Stefan working on this game. The reason I say experience rather than film because Bandersnatch's gimmick is that it in itself is a choose your own adventure game. In other words, there are a lot of layers here. Essentially, we're choosing the paths that Stefan goes on, but those paths are about Stefan making a game in which he chooses paths for a player to choose paths in, but then the game is based off of a choose your own adventure book where people choose paths for an adventure. It's a little wild, there's tons of layers here, but at the end of the day, this is what makes it one of the most innovating pieces of media in recent years. It's not quite the first piece of media to do something like this. Obviously, there's always been adventure games. Telltale Games did the very same make a decision to advance the plot mechanic. Some YouTubers in the past have created projects where viewers make a decision at the end of the video to advance the plot, but I'd argue that this is the first mainstream implication of this mechanic. Especially considering it is on Netflix, the biggest streaming service, a lot of people are going to watch slash play through Bandersnatch, which will give them the itch to interact with more media just like it. But while Bandersnatch is innovative, it doesn't mean we can't look at it more critically. I mean, what is a film that has these gimmicks, but doesn't have a good plot, or acting, or direction? Um, probably Telltale's The Walking Dead Season 2? Fortunately though, that's not the case for Bandersnatch. What we have here is an actually very well thought out plot with again plenty of layers. What starts out as a movie about a teenager creating a game ends up being a movie about conspiracies. Moments where the fourth wall is completely shattered. Sections where you wonder what is real and what isn't. Psychedelic imagery and multiple endings that don't matter. That's right, the endings don't matter. But that's a positive here. Everything I just said was a positive. There are quite a few endings, most of which you can get through in the span of a couple of hours, but Bandersnatch does something that a lot of video games with the same gimmick don't allow, and that's going back and making a different choice. The creators could have easily created these multiple paths and allowed the viewer to go through a 30 to 45 minute experience with a definite ending so they can go back and rewatch from the very beginning and make other different decisions that time. In a video game setting, this is something that you would do. Again, just like Telltale games, you make the decisions, they impact the story, you get an ending. That way you can go talk to your friends and talk about the differences and it makes you want to replay the entire game. Instead, what Bandersnatch does well is that it allows the players to go back and make different choices within the play session. Once you get to the first ending, the story seems like it could be easily over and yet you can keep playing. It'll take you back to the last major decision you made, only so that you can choose a different path and watch it out to the end. And it keeps doing this for roughly two and a half hours, creating an experience that folds in on itself multiple times, where you see similar endings based off of different choices and different endings based off of similar choices. It's an equal balance between watching a movie and playing a game. Or it's actually much more like the choose your own adventure books that they're trying to emulate here, where you choose a decision, flip to a page, 
read, make another decision, flip to another page, repeat until you've reached an ending. But since it is a book and you can flip through the pages, you can actually go and choose different decisions. Bandersnatch does the exact same thing basically. Given all this, with the really well done Netflix interface, we end up with a coherent plot with multiple storylines that work really well together. The story in Bandersnatch is actually interesting, and that's complemented by the solid acting performances, along with the 1984 setting, which adds an extra layer of depth to its conspiracy plot points. The writing is also great. It feels creepy when it needs to be. There's plenty of comedic moments, even through a good bit of its serious moments. None of the things that happen feel out of place no matter how weird they are. The only real criticism I have with Bandersnatch is the way it does choices. Whenever there's a deviation in the plot, we're given the option to choose between two individual choices. Sometimes these are minor choices, like what music Stefan should listen to, and other times they're really important to the story, like... I, I won't give spoilers, because there's some really f***ed up shit in here. Either way, there's only a couple of minor choices, so most of the choices do actually impact the story, which I really like. A lot of these choose-your-own-adventure, like, video games, those choices don't really impact the story that much. But sometimes we're presented with choices that you might not want to make. If you've ever played a Telltale game, you'll know that they give you the option to not make an option, not say anything, not do anything in a certain situation. When you don't say or do anything in those situations, it creates a different outcome. Now, of course, like I said, most choices in Telltale games are minor, and they don't actually impact the story, but in Bandersnatch, I would have preferred a different option if I decide not to take action. Instead, when you decide to not decide, the thing just chooses whatever your cursor is hovering over. It's not the end of the world, it's just I don't want people to choose for me. Now I know how Stefan feels, I guess. Overall, Black Mirror Bandersnatch was a success. I really enjoyed it, and it was dope to discuss it with friends. I highly recommend checking it out. Now that I think about it, I don't feel like there's really any replayability here though. And I know it's not technically a game, so rewatchability, whatever you want to call it. It's just, it allows you to go through almost all of the endings through a first pass, which I appreciate a lot, so that I don't have to like, watch a bunch of unskippable scenes. But I do feel like this hinders it a bit. I don't know. I'm not sure. I am looking forward to seeing what other kind of projects Netflix does that are similar to Bandersnatch. I'm also looking forward to watching more Black Mirror. I'm going to see how exactly I want to review those and Your Everyday Nerd because of course I got to make everything into content. Well, I guess I'm a sellout now. This episode of Your Everyday Nerd is brought to you by the Humble Bundle Comics Bundle Deadly Class. Featuring all 35 issues of the comics so far, you can get one of three affordable tiers to catch you up on the Deadly Class story before the rest of the show comes out. For only $1, you can get Volumes 1 and 2. For $8, you can get Volumes 1 through 4. And for $15, you can get the entire 7 volume set. Keep in mind that these are digital, but that does mean you can read them anywhere, on your computer, your tablet, and even your smartphone. If you were to get the physical copy of each volume, it would run you over $160, so for only $15, this is a great deal. If you do decide to purchase this bundle, you'll also be supporting your everyday nerd. That's all the time we have for today. If you liked the video, go ahead and hit that like button. If for whatever reason you didn't, you can hit the dislike button. Let me know down in the comments what your thoughts of Bandersnatch was. And if you have seen any other Black Mirror, let me know what your favorite episodes are so that I can go check those out. Go ahead and subscribe for more Your Everyday Nerd, and I will see you tomorrow. Goodbye.